are one uh, a part of the, the the earth we are a part of the uh, uh, we have a, 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 um, what to, uh, responsibility to uh, to our uh, the next generations to come that we have to take care of Mika Mered is a professor of Arctic and Antarctic geopolitics at the Aleri School of International Relations. He joins us now from Paris. Professor Greenland is looking for more self-reliance from Denmark and diversifying its economy would help with that. But at what cost? How are these mining projects likely to impact Greenland's environment? The environment will be greatly impacted by this kind of, pro of project, that's for sure. And that is exactly at the core of what uh, IA, Inuit Atakatigit, the likely the party that's got likely going to win uh, tonight, uh, it's been at the core of their political platform. Uh, indeed, the we have an issue here with the treatment, the way these rare earths are separated. And there's another issue. It is the fact that in this Kwanya Suet project, not only do you have rare earth, but you also have uranium. And this uranium as a byproduct uh, is actually what frightens the most uh, the Greenlandic people at that point. There's a lot of international interest in the, this election as well. Who do you think is likely watching very closely? <laughs> a, a lot of people. A lot of people is watching closely. And the first country who's watching closely is, of course, China, uh, because this Kuan Yasuit project is is possible because of China. Uh, clearly, at this point in time, uh, it is going to be Chinese companies which are likely to build the mine and benefit from the mine uh, simply because they've already bought 100% of the production of the mine for its whole duration, the 37 years uh, the mine will be in operation. So China is looking very much uh, at what's happening right now in Greenland, because if Inuit Atakategit wins tonight, as it's projected, then definitely the Kuan Yersuit project will be terminated. And if that happens, then for China, it's definitely a loss. But apart from China, there's also Denmark, of course, who's watching closely, uh, and the US. And everybody knows uh, that the US and Trump, the Trump administration, offered uh, to buy Greenland uh, a few years ago. And here, we are exactly, once again, at the cornerstone of something much bigger, which is Arctic geopolitics and transatlantic geopolitics altogether. So that's what's at play, at stake right now in Greenland. Even if these mining projects are shut down, global warming is impacting Greenland at a far faster rate than much of the rest of the world. Do you think that it is inevitable that at some point the country will have to turn to these deposits of rare earth elements, if not now, but down the road? Whether they like it or not, uh, they're likely indeed to end up uh, in 20 years, 30 years, 30 years time uh, exploiting uh, these rare earths. There, there's just one reason here. Uh, if we, at the global level, want to undergo a, a digital transition and a renewable energy transition as well, then at one point in time in this process, uh, we will need rare earth. And these rare earth, well, they're pretty much located all, all over the globe, but only in very specific deposits can they be exploited uh, with profit, commercially speaking. And Greenland is one of the most promising uh, areas in that field. So at the next uh, election in four years, maybe Shubut will be back in and maybe the Kwanya Suite will be back uh, online. Maybe it's going to be only in 30 years, in 40 years, when Greenland will look at new, um, new business developments to finance its independence. But ultimately, if it's not now, in a, number, in a couple of decades, they're likely to, uh, to, to exploit these resources anyway. You talk about uh, potential new business developments, and, and we know an independent Greenland is something that a majority of Greenlanders do want. What would that mean in terms of the need to develop business relations with other countries? China, for example, how would China potentially exploit that? Actually, they've exploited it very, very carefully and very well uh, for the past 10 years already. So actually, since 2009, Greenland has been able to develop its own trade relationships uh, with countries all around the world without having to rely on Denmark, uh, and especially in the field of fishing 
and um, renewable uh, resources and natural resources as well. So right now, Greenland, and that's really what's at the heart of this campaign uh, at this uh, at this hour. It's do we want in Greenland? Do Greenlanders want uh, Greenland to become independent and finance its independence uh, by developing new industries, such as, for example, renewable hydrogen, such as, for example, um, sand exports? fishing, tourism, or do they want to keep uh, fun funding this independence and developing uh, thanks to fossil fuels, thanks to uh, extractive activities such as um, rare earth, uranium, and so on and so forth. This is really what's been at the heart of this campaign. And right now, it seems like Greenlanders are more likely to choose Inuit Atakatigit, meaning uh, they're likely to choose uh, those who are in favor of re more renewable industries than uh, traditional extractive ones. All right. Well, we'll be watching closely. Mika Mered, thank you so much.